Well, hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine, and welcome back to the Friday Video and Audio Masterclass here on Adobe Live, Behance, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, among other places. Great to see you all. Gosh, it has been a minute. It's been a while, and uh, very glad to be back here on the stream. Today, we are going to be covering a topic which I like to revisit every six months or so, give or take, because it's the one thing that well, all new users of video and audio always want to know about. Uh, we recently had the Max conference, which is why you haven't seen me in a couple of months. Uh, we've been on replay. And uh, without fail, uh, I had a bunch of people asking about a lot of the new things in Premiere. Next week's stream, in fact, we're going to be covering a lot of those new features, including the new Remix tool in Premiere, which we've showcased before, new-ish. Um, but specifically, compression. How do I use compression? How do I make my vocals or my voice in my video just, you know, stand out, sit on top of everything else. How do I just make it a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker, a little, a little bit broader, wider, brighter? You can use all kinds of adjectives to describe what compression and limiting does. So we are going to cover that today with a combination of um, recorded voiceover and then you showcasing how you can use it kind of in an overall context, in a musical context, and then finishing off with the hard limiter, which is something entirely different, but this is something that you can use at the end of your sort of signal chain, whether you're uh, doing this in Premiere Pro or Audition or any, you know, DAW or NLE, just to give everything an overall boost, an overall bump, and just kind of glue things together a little bit more. Just to be clear, this isn't specifically mastering. That's a little different. That's a little more involved, but it's part of that process, and we'll kind of get into that. And of course, you can go back to earlier videos if you want to learn more specifically about some of the additional things you might do for audio mastering. So um, since it's been a while, it would be great to uh, give everyone a couple of shouts here. So I see we've got Tim. Nice to see you. Rachel, uh, you're very kind. Thankly, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, Theo, Theo, great to see you. Bobby, Orlando, did I have a great time at Adobe Max? I always did. And this year, I actually co-produced the keynote, uh, so I got to feature all new speakers. I trained up all the speakers. It was great to really see them shine and bring their personalities to the stage and really become new faces and voices of Adobe. And, uh, you know, I had my little part right there and it was it was just great. It was so great to be back on stage and among all the people and feel that energy. Reverb Mike, Z by HP. So nice to see you all. Uh, unfortunately, I see that uh, uh, Rena and Maya and a couple others, we uh, we got kicked out of one of the other streams. Yeah, I was having some, some StreamYard issues, but I didn't want to delay things here on the Adobe Live. So if you're watching, you'll be able to see a replay on the other channels. And uh, that's just how it's going to be. So, all right. So let's go ahead and get into it here. And uh, let's skip over. What's up, Momin and Vaith? Great to see you. All right. I met Max this year, but he... <laughs> All right, so let me go ahead and switch over my screen. And it has been a minute. I also completely rebuilt my streaming system this week. So we are uh, running on faith that all is going to go smooth and well and uh, in sync and everything else. Did some testing, looked good. So I think we're in good shape. Okay. And I can see our 30 second delay is absolutely implemented as I'm watching the replay here in front of me. All right. So we're going to start by uh, talking about specifically uh, using compression for voice. And I recorded a little voice over here. First, just straight ahead, all right, using my uh, MKH 416 right above me here. And a couple of things. So again, I'm going to go through all the steps, all the features of, of a compressor. And there are standard settings, standard parameters for virtually all compressors. Some retitle them, some don't actually give you all the same options. Again, they may be sort of relabeled slightly differently. But a standard compressor and the way that a compressor limiter works is the same across the board, right? Um, now, first and foremost, when you are wanting to apply compression or limiting, why, why do we even do this? Well, number one, we typically do this to control dynamics, right? So if you have a voice, if you have someone talking on camera in an interview on stage, and I, again, part of the benefit of doing this uh, and being able to use waveforms as a visual representation is that before you even do anything, it's gonna give you a better idea of like, do I even need compression? Is it necessary? And for the most part, most people would probably tell you, yes, it's always necessary, always use it. <laughs> and in 2022, 
that is in fact the case really for anything that's produced online. If you're going, you know, at a higher level, if you're producing videos for YouTube, if you're producing videos for, you know, Hulu, Netflix, if you're producing your own stuff, even on TikTok or wherever, adding some audio compression, hard limiting, is just gonna make things again, a little bit louder, a little bit punchier. It's gonna grab attention more. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna look at your waveform. Now, again, I did this, just, you know, it's one little sort of stream of consciousness. You'll get to hear what I was saying. I'm gonna put my headphones on so I can hear all this and you won't get any fold back here. Um, so first, let's take a look. All right, now again, we use compression to control dynamics. And if you just kind of take a look at my speech here, what you're going to notice is that it is very consistent. All right, very consistent. You know, there's little, little tiny peaks, but the differences in amplitude here are extremely minimal. Now, part of that is because I am a professional speaker. I am a professional certified voiceover artist. <laughs> and I know how to talk on a microphone. And I know how to adjust tonality and loudness, amplitude, volume as I'm speaking to keep things very consistent, right? This is what you pay for when you get a voiceover artist to do something on top of just having a particular voice that you want. Now, that being said, just because you are that way, there are in fact times where, you know, during a talk or during something, and I am certainly guilty of this, max notwithstanding, of course, is that you have excitable moments where you just have bits and pieces that are much louder and little bits and pieces that are quite softer in amplitude, right? So this is a perfect example of where you'd want to use compression particularly if you're going to be delivering this on YouTube or anywhere else, to just even things out, right? We like, well, some still like a bit of dynamic range, you know, very loud, very quiet, kind of makes you lean in, kind of in some ways forces you to engage more. But really in the kind of, you know, nowadays method of producing content for online, you don't want things to like suddenly get quiet. You just, you just don't, you're gonna lose people. So you wanna use compression to tame down some of those peaks and at the same time, maybe overall amplify and make everything else a little bit louder. First and foremost, a compressor limiter is an amplifier. You can use it to de-amplify or increase amplification of an entire file, of an entire recorded whatever, voice, drum, crowd noise, what have you, okay? Now, the settings that you use for something that looks like this obviously will be a little bit different than the settings that you're gonna use for something that looks like this, which is very consistent, all right? If you're in the chat, tell me that's making sense to you. I'm giving you a lot of context here so you understand what am I doing? This is the thing with compression. And again, I like, you know, someone said, oh, could you make a, a, a TikTok about this? <laughs> no, uh, I mean, I could, I won't, Maybe. Mm, yeah. Thing is, yes, I could do a one minute tutorial on how to do compression, but you're, you're not gonna really understand. This is one of those things. You, you just have to sort of understand how it works. And it just, there's some context that's required. Already people are going for eight minutes. They're like, ah, so much talking. Yes, tough. Okay, so let's start. So I'm going to use a native effect for this to showcase this. Um, I'm gonna turn this off first. So let's just take a quick listen just to the raw file. We're gonna start with this one here so you can kind of get an idea of what this sounds like. So today we're gonna to have a look at using compression to adjust the dynamics of a voice. And as we've discussed in the past, um, there's really two things you need to know about compression. Well, first of all, compression and limiting are really the same thing or they're controlled in the same way, but it's determined which you're using by the ratio that you use inside the compressor limiter. Okay, so it just kind of gives you an idea of the overall sound of this. And again, it just sounds sort of very, you know, streamy, broadcasty, straight ahead, nothing major. I'm not jumping in dynamic range dramatically. I'm just talking, I'm just talking, all right? So for something like this, we're just gonna compress it a little, maybe to tame down some of these little peaks. Again, the differences in amplitude here are like, if I look at the average, it's like two to three decibels, maybe. And it's, it's momentary, they're transient peaks. Your ear is not going to perceive a change in amplitude that's less than a dB and a half. It's gotta be more than a dB and a half for you to even perceive it. And if it's momentary, and we're talking something like a T or a, you know, like, ah, ooh, uh, whatever, very good. 
you don't really perceive it as so much louder, right? So we don't want to, we don't need to do too much of this just to make it a little bit more unified, okay? So we're going to go into the, um, the tube modeled compressor, which uh, has a decent sound and I use it because it has very good metering. Again, part of setting a compressor is understanding the visuals. You'll see what I mean when we go in there. Now you can apply this, this would be a destructive application if we apply it this way via the effects menu. I've gone ahead and added a tube modeled compressor here in the effects rack, uh, which is going to allow us to do it sort of non-destructively. And then we can apply, hold on, my f I'm in the way of that. We can apply it uh, destructively in this view when we're ready. By the way, for those new to Audition, this is the waveform view. This is the destructive view. This view here, this is the multi-track view. This is completely non-destructive. All right. So I have added the tube model compressor here. All right, and let's kind of focus in on this. All right, get your learnings on, friends. Here's how it all works. So all compressor limiters, again, oh, liar. Yeah, some rename these things, some eliminate some of them because they'll do automatic attack release, for instance, so you might not have those parameters. Some of them don't have an output gain. It's, it's, it's boost or it's retitled something else. But any basic compressor limiter, I keep saying that very carefully because they are, again, one and the same. The difference is the ratio. All have these five parameters. And the first one is threshold. I should have made little pop-ups here. I, I think I had those at one point. Threshold is the point at which compression begins. So your voice in this case, if this is our threshold, all right, and we're working in a, lo a, a negative logarithmic scale when we're working digitally, all right, where zero is as loud as we can get, right? So your signal must exceed, this doesn't look perverse, right? It must exceed the threshold for any compression to happen at all. So compression is the point, so threshold is the point at which compression begins, all right? And that's what this slider is going to do. This is going to adjust the threshold, okay? All right, then we have output gain. I'm gonna set this to zero. Output gain is just that. It's going to allow you to add back in a little bit of gain because naturally as you're compressing things down and depending upon how severely you set the threshold, you might lose some gain, you might lose some volume. So that allows you to pump it back up. And we're gonna come back to this because one way that you can use output gain is to basically make, again, the perceived volume the same and then you know that compression is set properly. But typically you're also just going to add a little bit of output gain to again, just kind of push things a little bit forward. And I see Mike was just saying here, amplification, or sorry, what did you just say? No, I just read the wrong one. A little dynamic range compression will make your voice pop over the music. Absolutely true. You kind of just want it to sit on top of things, right? So the output gain is gonna allow you to control that. All right, then you have your ratio. And you'll see this, I don't know why we have that stupid X there. That, that shouldn't be there. You know, that's been there forever. If any of my audio team is watching, can we eliminate that? There, there's no reason for that to be there. It should just be four colon or X colon one. There's no X. X is a number, it, that X doesn't need to be there. That's redundant, meh. Ratios are one to one, two to one, four to one, eight to one, 10 to one, 20 to one, infinity to one. And what that means in this case, a four to one ratio means that for every four decibels that your signal goes above that threshold. So one, two, three, four, <laughs> using my hand, for every four decibels above the threshold, it's one decibel at the output right? So it's effectively squeezing three of those decibels away, you get one. So if I were to exceed, if I've got a ratio of four to one, and I go eight decibels above the threshold, the output is two. If I go 12 decibels above the threshold with a four to one ratio, the output is three. Math, right? That's what that means. Now, also on ratio, as I may, you may have just heard there in that little uh, voice track, we're talking about uh, ratios determine whether you're compressing or limiting. So any ratio below 10 to one is compressing signal, where again, we're kind of squashing down peaks that get out of range, 
right? Those excitable moments, we're squashing them down. When you use a ratio above 10 to one, that's considered limiting. You're still squeezing down peaks, but now you're also bringing up automat by nature, you're bringing up the quieter parts um, of a voice, of a piece of music, of whatever it is. Now, to be honest, for video production in particular, when you're talking sort of like voice and music or just voice, you're not really gonna be limiting things very often. Now, where that differs is if you're doing something like a live sports broadcast, you know, World Cup, where you've just got a lot of noise and, you know, it's just a lot of, you know, screaming, ah, goal! <laughs> that was my attempt of at saying goal. What was that? What was that voice? Um, or, you know, watching last night, Thursday Night Football, right? Bucks and uh, Ravens. A lot of excitable moments there. If you're a Ravens fan, congrats. If you're a Bucks fan, sorry. Uh, I'm more of a Packers fan myself. But, uh, and I live in Arizona. I like the Cardinals too, but whatever. Anyway, um, you know, there's excitable moments and there's crowd noise and you got people talking and it's loud where they are. So limiting can be used in those contexts, particularly for sort of the main mix where they're bringing all these other elements in and people are getting really excitable and screaming and their, their dynamics are insane. And they just kind of want to keep all the crowd sound up and everything else. You might use it really in those cases, but, and it was used, you know, years ago more in radio. They probably still use it in broadcast radio. I'm just saying in general, you don't, you don't actually limit things as often as you compress. You hard limit, you brick wall limit. We'll talk about that in a minute, but just straight up limiting for like a voice. I mean, I, I, you can it just, you probably shouldn't have to, especially if it's something like you're doing a video for something. If you're having to use a ratio of 20 to one for a, a recorded voice, you recorded it poorly. Like that's, you know, that's the fact. Now it could just be also that whatever, you just want to use it for that. You're using it for effect because ultimately you'd probably want to use compression to, to tamp those things down, assuming that you have kind of a median range of audio. All right. I know so much talking. And Tim says, or maybe when you're running sound production for Max and Jason starts singing. Yes. I mean, again, especially if I'm hitting super high notes, it can get very loud, but even then I'd probably go with like an eight to one, you know, because I tend to go, I tend to drop that down very quickly, but yes, good, good point. Hello, Naveen. All right. <laughs> David Lewis. Hey, how's it going, man? All right. Cheese grommet. All right. So that's ratio. Attack. We're almost into playing back with compression. I know. Sorry. Not sorry. This is a learning lesson. You're going to learn stuff. If you want to know how to use this, once you know, you know. You'll never have to come back to this again. I promise. Attack is how quickly, after you exceed the threshold, the compression kicks in, right? Now you might say, well, wouldn't I always want it to kick in right away? Well, again, if we talk about sort of broadcast voice or just sort of voice in general, voice for a voiceover, voice for a documentary. Uh, yes, maybe. A lot of it has to do with pacing. Some of it just has to do with how much, how, how frequent, you know, again, based on the dynamics of the actual voice itself, how upfront you want it to be. You know, there's, there's a word that we use in, uh, in the audio world, so, which is, you know, we use it in a lot of things. Sometimes you want things to breathe a little. So maybe, you know, if the person is really consistent, maybe you don't, yeah, and you're, you know, you're only compressing very little, maybe two to one every now and again, that gets a little bit louder. You, you don't, maybe you want to have that attack kick in fairly quickly. If it's something where some people kind of get gradually louder, right? Then you can have a slightly slower attack so that it kind of kicks in a little bit later. But again, for voice, that's typically going to be very, very fast, usually under 11 milliseconds for voice. Now, where you want longer attacks, specifically things like percussion, uh, percussion, percussive instruments, drums, bass. And the reason for that is if you, the attack is too fast, the compressor is going to kick in too quickly and you're going to clip the actual attack transient of say, hitting the snare drum. Bah! And when it's too quick, it's actually going to sound like a click. It's going to sound horrible. 
So again, for those of you mixing music, and you're like, ooh, this is good info. If you're adding a compressor to a snare and you're not hearing but you're hearing like this kind of sound and like you kind of hear like the of the snare afterwards, your attack is too fast. If you want to preserve kind of the crack and the fat attack of a snare, again, it's not absolute, but typically that's gonna be like 18 milliseconds, maybe as much as 24. Similarly with toms, if you're on a slower track, you want to get that kind of Ringo Starish sound, bah, 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 bah. and you kind of want to preserve the boom, that first attack. You want that to be a little slower. Yeah, it could be like 18. It's a good good starting point. All right, maybe 21, maybe as much as 24. The longer you make that tack, though, the longer it takes for the compressor to kick in. So again, you can use this to affect specifically with music, specifically with an overall mix at times. It's then actually used more as an effect as opposed to a dynamics controlling device. You just have to play around. But I'm giving you the, the parameters here. Voice, anywhere from 0 to 11 is pretty typical. Percussive instruments, bass guitar, you know, 15 to 30. 30 is a bit much, but that's typically where you want it to preserve some of the doo, doo, doo. You know, I play a Rickenbacker, it's super thumpy. I want the thump, I want the attack, but I also want the beginning of the note. You know, if the attack is too fast, it just kind of sounds like th it's, it's too quick, all right? And then the release time. And the release time is after it compresses, after the attack has happened, it's exceeded the threshold, the compressor kicks in, how quickly it releases that compression to go back to the original volume. All right. Now, again, it, it depends on what is that original volume? What, what's the state of your original recording? As explained for voice, typically voiceover, broadcast voiceover, documentary voiceover, you generally want kind of a somewhat quick release. You don't want it to kind of linger because what can happen is it can compress things down and then it gets, it gets sort of noticeably quieter. This almost sounds kind of like ducking, right, in a way. Um, there's times where you do that musically. You're not going to typically do that for a voice. So usually your release time is going to be fairly quick, right? Even sometimes faster than 59 milliseconds. Maybe it's 39. This you have to play around with. If it's too fast or too slow, you can get what's called sort of pumping and breathing, where you kind of hear this like, <sighs> not your voice, but you hear the compressor kind of kicking in and out. If you hear that, chances are your release time is set incorrectly. Start scrubbing it. And these are all scrubbable values, by the way. And you can eliminate that, you know, pretty quickly. Okay. So threshold, output gain, ratio, attack, release. These are your standard parameters. Now, in the case of this particular voice here, again, I don't need to, uh, I don't need to do a lot to this. I just kind of want to even things out a little bit and uh, at the same time, maybe make it a little bit louder. So for voice, again, and something like this where I'm seeing the, the average is maybe, maybe it's as much as four decibels difference. Yeah, maybe four. I'm going to use a ratio of four to one. Let's just keep it at that, all right? Now I'm going to set the attack fairly quickly. And I'll, yeah, I'll leave the release at 56. I just kind of landed there. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start adjusting this threshold slider. Now, as I play this back, again, I want, I'm going to use this meter here. So you're going to see level in here. So today we're going to have a look at using compression to, and this red meter here, this is showing you your gain reduction. Now, again, this is minus six, this, or sorry, this is six, this is 12, this is 18. Because we're at four to one, we've got to see this number four slot here, we have to see that illuminated so that we know that we're exceeding that threshold by at least four, all right? If we don't see that, we're not compressing anything, all right? Again, if we see it hit eight, now we know we're going sort of twice, we're twice as hot above that threshold. So if we're using a four to one, we've got to see at least number four hitting here for some of those out of band peaks. Remember, we're not trying to necessarily tame everything. It's just some of those quieter bits. So let's start by playing back and adjusting the threshold. To adjust the dynamics of a voice. And as we've discussed in the past, um, there's really two things you need to know about compression. Well, first of all, compression and limiting are really the same thing or they're controlled in the same way, but it's determined. All right, let's just take it back right about here. 
All right, so this little bit's a little bit louder. Let's see, we're probably going to hit around minus six right there. Let's Dynamics see. Dynamics of a voice. And as we've discussed in the past, um, there's really two things you need. All right. And then sort of come over here, a little bit louder. Let's see, look at some of these. It's going to lift up quiet parts as well while simultaneously squashing down peaks, which ultimately makes things potentially maybe a bit louder. Okay, so as I look at the threshold, which is roughly minus 27 decibels, I look at my gain reduction meter. That's what that red meter is. It's showing me that I'm generally around, you know, four, four decibels sometimes three, because again, it's not quite as loud. I may even back it off just a little because I don't really want to affect things too much. Um, it doesn't sound unnatural with the attack or the release. It sounds normal. And I'm just going to tame some of those peaks. All right, eh, maybe I'll bring it down where it was. All right, now, what you want to do is, again, we haven't squashed this down significantly, but one thing that you can do is when you're trying to audition what you've done, you want to turn the compressor on and off. And that's going to let you hear has the volume changed? Now, if you, again, use a really aggressive, if I did this threshold, I'll, I'll drop it down for a second to show you. Well, at first, let's see. Let's see if, if there's an, uh, a noticeable difference in amplitude. So we're gonna start with it off and then I'll turn it on. Ratio that's below a 10 to one is considered compression and anything above 10 to one is considered limiting. Now, in most cases, you're very likely not going to be using limit. All right, maybe it's like a tad quieter, a tad quieter. That's good. So that means that we've basically just kind of evened out all the dynamics. Now, if I were to go to something like this, take a listen now. As much you may if you're doing something Let's like turn it off. Where you just have levels uh, of dialogue and sound and background noise really all over the place. Right, so now you can hear it's brought everything way down. Okay, so that means that my threshold is set pretty aggressively. I'm compressing the heck out of this. I don't necessarily want to do that, right? Certainly not because it doesn't really need it. But this is where I would use that output gain to make up the difference. Now, if you're over compressing, this, is, this would be an example of over compressing something, all right? We can add that gain back. And then the way that you know that it's actually set properly based on your ratio and threshold is when you turn the volume on or off, it should be the same, which means you're bringing it back to that kind of original listening level. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm staying zoomed in so you can see this. I hope you hope that's working for you. Okay, here we go way, but it's determined which you're using by the ratio that you use inside the compressor limiter. So any ratio that's below a 10 to 1 is considered compression, and anything above 10 to 1 is considered limiting. Now in most... All right, so you can see with a ratio, with an output of about 6.5 dB, now theoretically that's considered like twice as loud, but we squashed it down, ha you know, by like 50% basically. So when I was going on and off, it's now kind of at that same level but everything's gonna be really, really flattened out. And you can also hear now, right? We're bringing up the output. So we're just automatically kind of amplifying any of the background noise that's in the room. I didn't, I didn't denoise this. So that's how you know you're sort of over compressing. And it now sounds a little bit, it sounds very broadcasty, sounds like a radio, but it's, it's too much, it's not natural. We wouldn't want this for like, you know, podcast. It sounds too processed. And it's because our threshold's set too aggressively. So let's go ahead and set that back to what it was. And in this case, let's just do, let's just do around two decibels of output gain and take a listen. We'll start with it off. In most cases, you're very likely not going to be using limiting as much. You may, if you're doing something like a live broadcast where you just have levels uh, of dialogue and sound and background noise really all over the place. But the difference is, is that compression is going to squeeze down intermittent and transient. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. So with that in mind now, all right, and maybe we even just make this like 1.5, right? Remember, you're not going to hear anything that's less than that. So we're, we're, we're going very non-aggressively here. This is where if I wanted to, and I'm just doing this so you can kind of see this before your eyes here. If I wanted to simply apply this, all right, again, you can see we squashed the amplitude down, but now everything is, it's also been compressed. Notice that everything is very, very evened out. And then once we've done this, theoretically, right, we could bring this all up, or I could just use the output gain to do the same thing, right? I kind of kept it down. And now everything is super even. Now it missed like one little transient peak here are really the same thing, or they're controlled in the same way, but it's determined which you're using. All right, so here was our original. So today we're gonna have a look at using compression. Here's the uh, applied version. 
and to adjust the dynamics of a voice. Now again, you're going, wait, it sounds kind of the same volume, but it looks so much smaller. Yes, because we didn't boost. We just kept the volume about the same. And we brought everything down to sound apparently the same using compression. That is the goal. That's typically what you're trying to do. Now, as mentioned, if we wanted to simply come in here and give this a little bit of boost. So let's give it about four and a half. Let's see. So today we're going to have a look at using compression to adjust the dynamics of a voice. And as we've discussed in the past, um, th there's really two things you need to know about compression. Well, first of all, compression and limiting are really the... That's even a little bit closer. Let's go ahead and do this and apply. All right. And there it is. Now it's, it's virtually the same, right? And it's even... It's just a little bit more present. So it's going to be perceived as a little bit louder. Here's, here's the before levels uh, of dialogue and sound, and, and here's the after. Levels uh, of dialogue and sound, and it's just more even, all right? That's the basic way that you use the compressor. That's ultimately what you're trying to do. Now again, some people might be watching going, oh, but you killed all the dynamic range. Well, yeah, yeah, 2022, fight me. I, I don't love it. That's, that's how it is, friends. Now you know. How do we prevent killing the dynamic range as much? Lower the threshold, smaller ratio. It's in your hands. You can control it, all right? Now, here's where this gets a little more interesting. And I just had someone ping me about this the other day. They were saying, well, what if my levels are all over the place? So you can see right here, like right this one, we're peaking at around minus one, all right? And then down here, as you can see, my voice is very consistent. This is minus 18. So there is a huge dynamic, dynamic range difference in this, okay? So how do we control something like this? And you might be thinking, oh, well, limiting, right? No, no, we're gonna use compression as well here, but we're going to, again, kind of take advantage of using uh, some makeup gain, right? to boost things just a little bit overall. But most importantly, we're, we're trying to bring those louder peaks down, right? We're not necessarily wanting to bring the quieter bits up to those louder peaks, 18 decibels, that would just, mm. Maybe overall you do that in the end if it's like a really quiet, controlled recording. This is so noisy because I've got my fans running in here, air conditioning above, all right? But let me show you how we do this, okay? So in this case, I'm just going to highlight this so it, uh, it, it cycles through. Let's go into our compressor here. By the way, under... Uh, this is driving me so freaking nuts. Why, why is this not doing it? It's... What is this? This is 12.6. Yeah, 12.6. Double clicking. Like, uh, why is this not opening up? It's really driving me crazy. Oh my God. Uh, I don't know what happened in 12.6. Is this happening to anybody else? Double click doesn't do it. Thankfully you can just right click, edit, select it, but oh gosh, really? If I were a drinker, that would drive me to it. Okay. So in this case, we're still going to go with four to one. Let's do, let's set this at zero first. Let's keep that at three. Give me the release a little bit longer. And this time we're going to use a slightly less aggressive threshold because we don't need to. We're only trying to tame these really loud peaks. So let's cycle through this and take a listen. We're going to start at zero here. Now, trying to show how you can have a variety of different peaks with compression. Now, you wouldn't limit something like this. As you can see, okay. my voice This is stuff isn't really consistent. being touched. <laughs> but you may have those moments where things get a little bit more loud or excitable, or maybe they crescendo like this. Now, trying to show how you can have a variety of different peaks with compression. Now, you wouldn't limit something like this. As you can see, my voice is very consistent. <laughs> but you may have those moments 
where things get a little bit more loud. Okay. Now, again, I could go even more aggressive on the threshold here, specifically for those louder pieces. Let's see minus 30. I, th I think that's a bit much. I probably want to keep it more about minus 20. I'm just going to apply this here. All right. Yeah, that was a little too a little too aggressive. So let's go back to. I might. Have, by the way, the double click just worked there. Let's do 20, and apply this. All right. Yeah, that was it. That's the magic number. It's just even, right? So here's the before, right? And you probably saw like those, but those are really pegging. Those were like hitting about eight decibels above the threshold. So remember, for at four to one, for every eight, it's going to be two at the output, right? But this, nah, nah, that, squashing all those down, right? There it is again. Now it's not working again. Let's go back in here. Take a look again. I'm just going to highlight those sections. But, but, so we're hitting about minus eight right there. Now, about minus 10. They crescendo like this. All right, about minus, uh, yeah, minus nine ish. All right, let's go ahead and select it here. Apply. Take a listen. Now, trying to show how you can have a variety of different peaks with compression. Now, you wouldn't limit something like this. As you can see, my voice is very consistent. <laughs> but you may have those moments where things get a little bit more loud or excitable, or maybe they crescendo like this, right? And because you have that fast release, fast attack, right? It didn't end. We didn't use a ton of makeup gain, just a little, right? Three decibels or so. Nothing sounds squashed down. Nothing sounds like it's been modified. It's just now very even, right? And that is generally what you're trying to achieve. Look at the before. Here, I'll, I'll do peak static peaking, all right? Now, okay. So that's peaking at minus 10. All right. Now, all right, let's redo the effects rack there. Put these back. Now, trying to show how you can have a variety of different peaks. Everything's even. Now, you wouldn't right. limit something like this. As you can see, my voice is very consistent. Nice. Okay. All right. So that's a little bit of voice there. Okay. So let's go now into some other things here where we're talking about music and, you know, uh, different ways of setting things like release times. Okay. This is, again, one of those really confusing elements that, uh, in general, if you're just not, not familiar with setting things, you can mess it up and you can get those sort of weird effects. So this is a song, I think I've played this on the stream before. This is a recording from 20 something years ago um, where I have, uh, this was recorded in my old studio and it's my, my buddy, my uh, ex-collaborator, may he rest in peace, Fred Fung playing the drums with me. Also former collaborator Hiroyuki on guitar and Fred's playing some brushed drums. Uh, in the studio, which I had mic'd. The studio had like 24 foot vaulted ceilings. So I mic'd the room a la Abbey Road Studio 2 to capture the the room ambience as well. So just take a, and I'm, I'm gonna cut ahead here so you can kind of hear some of the, um, the sounds. Old Zildjian, Dark Crash. Okay. Now, you might notice that I already have a compressor applied to this. All right. So let's turn it off and hear what that same thing sounds like. Now, you kind of lose some of the brushes, right? But the toms are very, very dynamic. I'm gonna come back in right about here. Okay, it was just a snare and open hat. But specifically with the toms, 
bam, bam, bam. Now they sound great, great miking, thank you very much. But with the compression on, right, they really ring. Listen. Right? We're sustaining the sound of those toms. And this is where I like to show, this is a, this is a Waves plugin. This is simulating an old Fairchild 670, all right? And this has VU meters on it, volume unit meters. Now, what's great about this, again, now, <laughs> just with regard to what I said earlier, remember I said, oh, they all have the same standard five controls. Okay, well, this one has an input gain. The other didn't have that. This one has threshold. Then it has time constant. Okay, so this is kind of your, this is effectively your, your, your release time, all right? This kind of has an auto attack here. So your time constant is kind of a half attack, but it's really your release time. And you adjust this based on the sort of timing, the rhythmic value of the signal in question. So in this case, I don't want to use a really fast release on these drums, because again, then you're just going to get the attacks. G -g 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 I want ka ka ga 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 right? Take a look at the meters here. I want, this is something that you, you have to be able to see the visual to understand. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. All right. So I have this set at, at this time. It's an arbitrary value here, four. Okay. I want you to look at these, at these VU meters. And when you see it hit the kick drum and the toms, because those are kind of the loudest things here. Again, these brushes are quiet. You're going to see how those, the meters are sort of they're holding on and they're moving rhythmically to preserve and keep that signal a little bit more compressed, a little bit longer to preserve a little bit more amplitude here. Right? And at the same time, because it's releasing slower, right, it's keeping the brushes compressed, right, which is just automatically kind of making them feel a little bit more present, right? So I'm showing you this. Again, you may not have this plugin. There's lots of plugins that have uh, uh, VU meters that simulate. Again, this is a, a one from the 60s. But uh, digital metering, it's, it's very hard to illustrate that, that kind of rhythmic feel. Now, Again, if we sort of go, let's rewind this back. Now, I don't have this set particularly aggressively, but if we go to something like a super fast, uh, super fast release, Because this is so slow, I mean, that's nice. It makes it more present, but it, again, this is sort of apples and oranges. This is where you get into the, this is musical nerdery. It's nice. That fast attack kind of keeps things. You just really, it really snaps in your face. And you can see it's just, it's recovering very quickly, but it, it, it's just, the feel isn't there, right? And there's something about this. Let me like do this here. particularly in the symbols, and he's using um, a sizzle symbol, which for anybody who's, uh, <laughs> who's uh, thank you, Cody. <laughs> Great for a musical background sound. Anybody who's familiar with the jazz sizzle, these are all old 60 symbols that Fred used. Um, they ring, they ring for a really long time. I've said this on stream a lot. I despise, despise like death, new symbols. They're all so bright. Barf, they're so bright. Give me a dark crash. Not like I'm like goth. Nothing, there's anything wrong with that. I'm not, I like some goth, but dark crashes, bright symbols, I just forget it. I, I'm done with music. I don't want it then, you know? Which is part of the reason why I can't stand <laughs> most uh, sort of, you know, drum computer, dr drum computers. What am I, 1980? Uh, drum programming beats because the non-symbol symbols are just, they're just, 
bright. So bright. It's like big band, you know? Not a huge fan. I like peas some. You know what I actually like? We're getting on a rant here. Um, Seth MacFarlane did like a Christmas album where he's singing with a big band, the creator of Family Guy, among others. Hilarious. Um, he's a great singer. I actually enjoy that. It's a modern recording. Modern recording of big bands kind of suck because, again, there's no dynamic range at all. That's the problem with modern jazz, right? There's no... Jazz has to breathe. Man, it's got to breathe. There's no breathing anymore. Um, but I actually really enjoy that record. And there's some big band that I like. There's a couple Frank Sinatra tunes, obviously. But, you know, in general, bright. Bright horns, bright everything. Bright splash cymbals. Blech, hate that. Okay, let's take a quick listen to this. We're going to look at uh, the vocal compression. And then I'm going to send you on your way. All right, let, let you hear a little bit of this. A little emotional me from some time ago. I'm doing it here. I'm What can I say? She's walking away from what we've seen. What can I do still loving you? It's all a dream. Will I try? I still don't see why she says what she does. How can we hang on to a dream? Okay, so that little <laughs> that's what got me my spouse. No, um. Okay, so these little, again, you're hearing almost glottal sounds. Now, by the way, that's recorded with a condenser mic, AT4060 tube mic, one of my favorites. Um, I'm super close. This was an overdub. I do have the live one here, but it's while I'm actually sitting at the electric piano. This was like, a, I just did an, I, I, this whole record was supposed to be live, but I did overdub the vocal, I admit. All right, one take though, you can see, no edits here. Um, it's the compression that's making that really stand out, right? And that vocal is just, it's just sitting there. It doesn't sound compressed. It doesn't sound squashed. It's just, it's just there, right? So let's take this off and play that back again without the compression and without the delay, incidentally, all right? She says what she does. How can we hang on? To a dream, how can it really be the way it seems? Okay, so again, it's it's fine, but like you just it's like you, you lose the romanticism. It's romanticism. Here it is again. I'm not just making you listen to this, by the way, because I think it's great. I'm just saying, listen for the difference. She says what she does. How can we hang on? Okay, and let's do it again. How can we hang on? It's just, it's just like, mm, it's not there, right? And you put the compression back in. How can we hang on? All right, you get the idea. Now, this one, again, I'm using a different plugin, but same thing would be achieved here. And for this, this is another good example. 
is this not going to let me do this again? Oh, you. You. All right. Again, this is very classic model of a Yuri 1176. Attack and release. Now you're saying, hey, wait, output, that's the output gain. Ratio, four to one selected for most vocals here. You're like, oh wait, but where's the threshold? Well, this one uses an input control, right? So it's kind of an, it's an, it's an auto threshold based on input setting, right? Input is the threshold on this. So again, it, it's the same, just they're sometimes named slightly differently. What's key here is that this release all the way to the right is very, very fast, okay? And you can see the attack is a little, it's, it's a little bit slower. So this is the opposite way. One is quick, seven is fast. So the attack's a little slower because the vocal is so slow. And as you look at the voice here, because I'm singing sort of quietly, I saw someone say a little bit of vocal fry. Oh, Anthony Villa, what's up, man? Yeah, I'm, I'm singing like very emotionally, uh, you know. Um, the dynamic range is not changing very much. Now, if you over compress this, it just, it, what happens is it, then it starts to pump. And that's what you don't want. And you know, I hear this so much in modern vocals, especially with things that are really slow. You don't even hear things that are super slow. This is really slow. This is also, a, you know, in three, four time, it's a waltz. You don't, you don't hear a lot of waltzing in 2022. This is an old Tim Harden song, by the way, from 1968. Um, so again, you know, you just, it's, it's really slow. So you don't want compression attacking really quickly because it, it just doesn't, it, you know, like read the room. Well, read what's happening here. It's slow. Everything should be happening slowly. Now the release can happen quickly because I just, when there is something that's being hit to that compressor where we're getting something, in fact, here, let's look. Let's look at the, uh, let's look at our metering here. What can I say? She's walking away from what we've seen. Right? Notice we're, we're, we're basically hovering around minus three. What does that mean? It means we're not compressing a heck of a lot most of the time. Right? It's not compressing a lot. It's really in those moments. And uh, 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 I'm getting loud. And uh, then that slower attack is slightly trying to bring those things down while keeping everything up front, right? It's, it's a rhythm. If you watched my friend Gio uh, from the Max Keynote, which is available uh, on the Creative Cloud YouTube channel, uh, he presented uh, Adobe Modeler, which is a new, a new app for digitally sculpting using, you can use desktop, you can use Oculus, uh, Oculus 2 VR, amazing. You actually get to see this dragon that he actually created. He is also responsible. He, he modeled one of the, um, uh, the Hulk characters for the MCU. The guy's just sick talent, like unbelievable. He's amazing. And I've seen him do it in real time. It's more amazing. But he talks about when sculpting, there's this rhythm and flow as you're doing things in the VR and you're kind of creating these textures and, 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 uh, and sort of doing this sculpting, it's like digital clay. Well, applying compression to things, it's, it's, there's rhythm to it. You have to listen. You have to listen to the release, the release time. It's almost like, it's almost like a beat, right? You have to kind of listen and you have to listen to that attack. How, how soon is it coming on? And if it's coming on too soon, you need to back the attack off. And if it's recovering too quickly, you need to make that release a little bit longer. And if it just seems louder, but you're, but when you mix it down or you apply it to something and then you mix the whole thing down, you still have peaks that are like clipping, then you didn't set your threshold properly, right? So there's all these considerations that happen when you're doing this that you just, you, you have to really listen. And you don't need great speakers, by the way, to hear compression. That's one of the nice things. You could do it on a laptop. You can do it in earbuds. You know, normally I'm like, don't, listening environment is very important. Compression is pretty easy to hear once you know what you're listening for, right? Once you know what those parameters are, you know what to listen for, you know how to apply it, and then you know how to use the attack and release against the threshold based on your ratio to get that right sound, right? All right. Someone was asking, oh, what's up, Bruno? Thank you very much. 
The those Bruno, those last ones, those are uh, from Waves, W A V E S. Those are plugins that you can buy. Uh, the tube modeled compressor that I showed, and here I'll, I'll, I'll just go back to that one more second. We're just about out of time here. So yeah, this is a third party plugin, but um, this one here, the tube modeled compressor. This is one of our native effects, okay, which again is the same. It sounds different. All compressors will sound different. The reason I use those is they just have different model sounds. But if you go into the amplitude and compression menu, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different types of compressors. Oh, and then the final thing that I was just going to talk about here is the hard limiter. And again, we've kind of covered this on other streams. If you put this at the end of your signal chain, this is the kind of thing that you would place here. I always put one for the stream to make everything a little bit louder. This is basically what we call a digital ceiling, where you just say, I'm going to set a maximum amplitude, which you want it below zero, and then you can add some boost to make everything louder, but it's never going to exceed that maximum amplitude. So that just kind of helps push everything a little bit forward. Again, you want to be careful with that because it's very easy to overdo. Um, you know, and we've covered that on other streams, and we will cover that again. But yes, we have we have a lot of native compression effects in the amplitude and compression menu that you can check out. All right, we've got the DCC coming up next. That is my time, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time, next week, same time, same channel. Have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.